Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be attempting to repair this Galaxy Note Fan Edition, which was described as not turning on or charging. Beyond the non-charging issue, the device has a loose home button, lifting screen, and it's missing its S Pen. For those unaware, this phone is a rebranded Samsung Galaxy Note 7 with a lower capacity 3200 mAh battery, which was released in 2017 and never recalled. This phone would have started out as an unopened Galaxy Note 7 before Samsung replaced the battery, flashed the software, model number, and installed a new back with the Note Fan Edition branding. This phone was only sold in very few countries, including Korea, Malaysia, and the Philippines. So getting your hands on one of these here in Australia is very difficult. Although I found this one for a total of $127. So this is what I got. It came with a box, although after I took it out of the box, I noticed this was actually for a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. So it was unfortunate that I didn't get the original box with this phone like I was hoping. Plugging in the USB-C connector, we can see that it comes up with the charging symbol before showing a temperature warning and the battery percentage never increasing from 0%. Even though the phone won't charge, we can press and hold the power button and it will still boot up and just run off of the charger. As you can see, it shows up with a screen saying the temperature is too low to charge. So it's definitely something wrong with some kind of temperature sensor on the phone. Navigating into settings, however, you can see this is indeed a Galaxy Note Fan Edition. To fix this, I'm going to need to open the phone and just figure out what this issue is. Now, I'll use some hot air on the rear panel to lift this out of place. Now, because this phone has been opened before, this adhesive is actually quite weak. I don't believe that they've installed new adhesive when they've sealed up the phone, but regardless, I used plenty of heat and even some alcohol to make sure that I didn't crack the original panel when I was removing it. I used a series of picks and a suction cup to pull this out of place. Shortly after, I can remove the glass panel and begin removing the six screws holding the wireless charging coil in place. Using a spudger, I can lift it up and out of the phone. With that out of the way, we can already see that this is a totally botched repair. You can see the earpiece here isn't plugged in. In fact, its cable is running underneath the motherboard, which is in turn pushing up on the motherboard, which isn't good for the device itself. Now, I'm going to take this out, reconnect that earpiece, and just reconnect the charging port assembly, as maybe with this botched repair, they haven't connected it correctly, and that is causing the charging error. Removing the motherboard is quite simple. It's held in with two screws and a series of flex cables and connections. Once those have been undone, we can make sure to remove that SIM card tray and lift the motherboard out of the phone. Turning our attention to the earpiece, we've now found that cable hidden underneath. It doesn't appear to be damaged, so let's hope it still works. I'll reinstall the motherboard and make sure everything is connected and seated correctly. I was quite confident that this was going to fix the issue because after seeing that earpiece, it wouldn't surprise me if it was something so simple like the charging port just not being connected right. With the phone together enough to test, we can plug back in that USB-C cable and see that we're still getting the same temperature warning. So it appears there's some kind of other issue with this phone. With the Galaxy S8 and later, the wireless charging coil must be connected for the device to charge, or it will show a low temperature warning. This isn't the case for the Galaxy S7 and Note 7 and earlier. As this phone is a Note 7 at the heart, it doesn't require the wireless charging coil to be attached to actually charge. With the motherboard removed once again, we can take a closer look at this charging port. You can see the model number on it here is N930F, or the Note 7 International. Now I believe the charging port is responsible for the low temperature warning, but we'll take a look at that a little bit later on. We're gonna bring our attention across to this front display, which we're going to need to remove so we can adhere it back down correctly. To get this screen off is actually quite difficult. Now this one is a replacement and it hasn't been stuck on very well. Regardless, I need to take extreme care as OLED screens are incredibly fragile and easy to break. Using plenty of heat and a card, I'm going to try and separate this display from the frame. Now there is a cable for the home button, which we'll need to be very careful of during this process, making sure not to damage or rip that cable. Finally, we can remove the display from the frame, being careful when feeding the two wires through the 
device's frame. With the display removed, we can take a closer look at the frame. I noticed this strange piece of adhesive without its film removed positioned behind the display. There is also some kind of different model of Samsung adhesive used to secure the display. It's been cut to fit and poorly applied with no adhesive at the bottom of the display, which would explain the loose home button issue. Now to do this properly, I sourced out some Galaxy Note 7 adhesive. They didn't sell just the one, so I brought an entire pack of 20, which was totally overkill. Regardless, we can remove all of the old adhesive from the frame, pulling it out of place. There's also a little bit on the display, which I'll remove as well. Next up, we can actually put this new adhesive on the phone. You can tell this is the correct adhesive for the model of phone, as everything is cut out correctly with the right sized holes and everything positioned right. Carefully positioning everything in place, I can come back and press it down firmly with the spudger. Now that the adhesive is ready to go, it's time to seat that screen back onto the frame. But before we do that, I want to just test out the screen now that we've removed it to ensure that it's actually still working. So connecting in the motherboard, I can attach the screen, power button and dock connector. Reinstalling the battery and plugging in the USB-C cable, we can see, well, the screen doesn't work. I'm seeing nothing on the display panel, which is quite concerning as it was functioning fine just before. I'm going to take off the display and take a closer look at it. We can see this is definitely a replacement model from China as by that sticker and some writing on the back. I also noticed an imprint where that adhesive was under the display, which got me thinking, was it actually there for a reason? Removing this plastic film, we can see the glass underneath is entirely shattered. It appears this piece of plastic was applying pressure and making the display work. I could have damaged this further when I removed the display, but it definitely wasn't a fully functional display when it was installed on the phone. Unfortunately, there's no way to fix this panel, so I had to source out a new one. Luckily, I already had this one around as I was going to use it on my Black Verizon Galaxy Note 7. It looks like I'm going to need to use this on the fan edition though. Not a big deal as I can just buy another screen. So to get everything into the new frame, I'll need to just transfer over a couple of other components from the old one, like the vibrate motor and the earpiece speaker. I'll also rob the three screws and the headphone jack from the original frame. Speaking of the charging port, I purchased a brand new one, or should I say a brand used one from China. Uh, it is clearly used, but as long as it works, that's all that really matters. This should fix the low temperature issue, so we can pop that one straight in the new frame. As for the old frame, I can install a new display on that and might use that in the future with my Verizon Note 7. But for now, it's time to reassemble the fan edition so I can place back in the headphone jack and the three screws securing in the charging port. Installing the vibration motor and the sensor cable, we can get that motherboard installed yet again, making sure to correctly route through the cables and connect the charging port and various other flex cables. Next up, we can put in the earpiece speaker, which I purposely left out as it's one less cable to avoid when seating down the motherboard. After installing the two cameras, we can install the two Phillips head screws holding the motherboard in place and turn our attention to the SIM card tray ejection mechanism, which you can see is missing a piece of plastic, which we'll need to salvage out from the old frame. Simply pushing that out with a pair of tweezers, I can push it into the new SIM card slot. This just helps the SIM eject tool from actually going too far inside of the phone, as you can see here. It also has a little bit of a grommet, which does help with the water resistance of the phone. With the phone now starting to take shape, we can install the speaker assembly and its appropriate screws. The next thing I'm going to do is give this battery compartment a clean out as it looked quite dirty, and then we can whack in the original 3200 milliamp hour battery and test out the phone. You can see the phone is now charging and shows no low temperature warning. So the issue was literally just caused by a faulty charging port. Once we've tested the phone out, we can reinstall the wireless charging coil and its six screws. Furthermore, we can turn our attention to cleaning up the speaker and wireless charging coil, removing any residual adhesive. The last piece of the puzzle is of course the rear panel and we're going to be reusing the original one. So we'll need to clean it up before we can apply some new adhesive. 
Now, this adhesive that I have is for the Galaxy Note 7, however, it doesn't have the pieces which go on the speaker and wireless charging coil assembly. So I will leave those pieces of adhesive installed and just clean up the edges where the new adhesive will sit. Lining it up correctly, we can press it down in place and make sure that it is aligned correctly as we don't want any sticking out of the sides. Pressing it down into place with a spudger will ensure it is properly adhered to the back panel. Pulling off the protective film, we can finally drop this back panel into place, sealing up the phone. Making sure it's aligned correctly, we can press it down into place. Then we can install a new S Pen into the device, and finally, remove the protective film on the display. And we're done. So this is it, a Samsung Galaxy Note Fan Edition 64 gig dual SIM model. The phone cosmetically looks great and is fully functional, right? Well, not quite. While complete and my repairs were performed correctly, the replacement display has some issues. Take a look. There is significant screen burn in on my display of what appears to be some kind of map app. While quite faint, it's most visible on a white background. Burn-in is permanent damage to a display caused by an item being displayed on the screen for too long. And given this is supposed to be a new replacement display, this is just unacceptable. Running Samsung's diagnostics which can be accessed through the phone app, the display has working touch and S Pen support. Another thing I noticed is the display has had a new piece of glass installed. I can tell this as the boot screen is white and my background has changed to a golden colour. And as Samsung phones set the boot screen and default background based on the color of the installed display, I can tell that this screen was once gold and not black. This phone is running Android 8 and security patch from August of 2018, although can be upgraded to Android 9. This video is an excellent example of why I never source parts from China. Most sellers purposely sell faulty or slightly defective displays, thinking people won't notice or just deal with it. They could sell these defective displays cheaper, but almost all would rather make a couple of extra bucks. Unfortunately, the Note 7 and Fan Edition parts are extremely hard to come by, and the only place I could find them is from China. So going in, I was expecting some kind of unmentioned issue. I have never had replacement parts from China fully work as they should or without some kind of cosmetic flaw. If you watched my Note 7 restoration video, you'll know that the first display I got had non-functional S Pen support and the seller offered me a $3 refund for a $120 screen. Of course, I ended up sending it back and getting a refund, resulting in a $20 loss with the postage costs. So do yourself a favor and buy parts anywhere else. Now, of course, the seller I purchased this from is going to hear from me, and I am going to attempt to get a significant refund on the display, and I won't be posting it back. And for those wondering, I own two original Galaxy Note 7 phones, one of which I have already restored, and another which needs quite a lot of repair. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the repair playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking to get some helpful tips or what tools I use to repair devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.